Hi, Graham from Monument Photos here. Hi, we're going to be uh, photographing this 1934 MG. So we're going to let you see behind the scenes of our typical car photo shoot. Okay, so the first thing really we want to do with any car is have a wander round about and just make sure we've got the best angle, the one that showcases the car off the best. For a car like this, we're looking for the front of it. There's some great badges on it, so we're going to try and pick out lots of nice details and give our client a beautiful classic shot of his car. So yeah, we think the kind of front panel here should be the best angle. Right, so a couple of points before we start. Number one, shoot as high resolution as you can. Make sure your camera's on the best settings. We're trying to get 100 ISO. Depends on the available light, but you want to get 100 ISO because in post-processing, that'll give you a much better chance of avoiding any grain. Um, second thing, shoot with a small aperture. Okay, if you use a big aperture like 2.8 or f4, you're going to have the front of the car in focus and the back about a focus already. So try and shoot with something like a, maybe an f18, f22 if you can get away with it. Um, and that will give you a sharpness from front to the back of the car. Uh, and the last tip before we get started is shoot raw. Okay, make sure you shoot raw with a photograph like this. Um, you've got much more uh, complex things you can do in post-processing if you shoot raw rather than just JPEG. So that's the camera set up. Let's take some shots and we'll get started. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is capture an, an ambient light exposure. I'm um, just what the available light is. Uh, and we're going to just take a shot here, obviously in manual. Um, we're shooting at f18 and uh, one sixth of a second and that should give us a good starting point for the, the car we're going to do some dramatic things with lights here second thing we're going to do is we're actually going to underexpose um, by quite a bit the reason for doing that is because we can then pick out a much more dramatic sky so I'm going three, three or four stops underexposed and that will give us uh, much more to play with when it comes to, to post-processing okay so happy with that so we're now going to move over to some of our other kit and what we're going to use is a Profoto B1 and we're using composite photographs when you use when you do car photo shoots um, so rather than just taking one straight shot we're actually going to take probably 25 to 30 shots of this vehicle okay so here we are with off camera flash and we're just going to take a sequence of shots and uh, light up different aspects and uh, we've got Lewis here assisting tonight thanks Lewis off you go okay and again Yep. Okay. And same again. And we'll come around this side here and light up some of the wheels. This is really just to kind of give us lots of to play with later on when we download onto the computer. Looks great. Okay, let me just get another one of the front tire here. Okay, right, good stuff. Okay, we're now going to move on to a grid. Um, Pro Photo, I've got quite a lot of uh, different gadgets here that we can make use of. And just to get in on the badges, uh, we're going to put on this, this grid here, 10 degree grid. And that will keep the light quite tight. And um, stop it from spilling out. So if I put that modern light back on there, we'll be able to see the effect we've got there. So let's uh, light up some of these. Okay, Lewis. Beautiful. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got the owner Roddy just to put on the kind of front headlights. And we're going to take a separate shot without flash. Again, an ambient light one just to capture the, the lights and that should uh, come together nicely in post-process. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is uh, I've added some green gel onto the front of this light here. And the job of this is purely just to light up the ground. Uh, and that should be quite a nice little effect. Okay, Lewis, whenever you're ready. And one more round here. Okay. Okay, that should be a wrap for this one. Um, as I said, in Photoshop is where most of the work happens. We'll bring all these images together in layers and using masks and overlays and so on. We should be able to composite quite a nice image. So uh, look out for this one. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.